5,500 cups. That's how many cups of Nescafe are consumed every second. Nescafe is the fourth most valuable beverage in the world after Coca-Cola, Pepsi and Budweiser. The cup of Nescafe that you have every morning was actually brewed during a stock market crash. Today we'll discuss how Nescafe was born out of a historic tragedy, how it entered India and what Nescafe's future looks like. Grab your cup of coffee, sit back and read on. Welcome back to Revolution Read On, a daily podcast where we break down one story from the world of business and finance. Click on the subscribe button to never miss an update from us. Here's your story for today. It was 1929. The US stock market was seeing rapid expansion. Prices of stocks soared to insane heights. People went frenzy over the bull market. From the banker to the cook, everyone rushed to invest in the stock market, hoping for high returns. Alas, the bull run was short-lived. The market finally crashed in October. By November, the market lost almost half of its value from $64 billion to $30 billion. The aftermath of the Great Crash was worse. The Great Depression, which lasted for 10 whole years from 1929 to 1939. Now, because people lost money, they didn't have enough to spare on luxuries like coffee. So Brazil, a major coffee exporter, was sitting on huge reserves. Brazil tried to burn coffee to reduce supplies and increase prices, but it soon realized it would have to find a more permanent solution to this problem. So it approached Nestle with a unique problem. Take our coffee and prolong its shelf life. How would Nestle do that? By creating instant coffee, the kind of coffee that we have now. The only problem? People had tried to do this before, but failed. However, Nestle took up the challenge. After eight long years and several failed attempts, it delivered a solution to make instant coffee that would retain coffee's natural flavor. All thanks to the mastermind, lead scientist Max Morgenthaler. His breakthrough work not only became a hit, but it gave birth to a whole new industry of instant coffee. In just two years, Nescafe was selling it in more than 30 countries. This popularity was until World War II in 1939. The political unrest in the world impacted the now global Nescafe. It had to do something. By 1941, it included instant coffee in the emergency rations of the US soldiers. And after the war ended in 1945, it included its product in the care packages for the needy across Europe and Japan. The next target for Nescafe was tea-drinking nations like India. To crack India, Nescafe used the four P's of marketing. First, promotion. It used celebrity endorsements ranging from actors like Deepika Padukone and Poorab Kohli to collaborating with the radio on shows like Mornings with Nescafe. Second, product. In South India, Nescafe introduced Nescafe Sunrise to match filter coffee. To enter the chai-loving north, it introduced Nescafe 3-in-1, a premix of coffee, dairy creamer and sugar. It also introduced foaming mixes of cappuccino, vanilla latte and choco mocha to attract young consumers. Third, price. For price-sensitive and value-seeking Indian consumers, Nescafe kept coffee affordable, making it available for 2 rupees in the form of a sachet. And finally, place. With favorite brands like Maggie and Kit Kat in its portfolio, it was easier for Nestle to introduce Nescafe and distribute it through its distribution network. The brand is growing with advancing technology. It is rolling out AR innovation where customers can enter different locations by scanning the Nescafe ready-to-drink cold coffee sachets. Crazy, no? But like every journey, Nescafe's journey ahead is also not an easy one. The first challenge to Nescafe's future, the rise of D2C brands. Several new D2C brands are currently setting foot in this space by targeting the millennials and Gen Z. This demographic not only prefers coffee to tea, but they also want to experiment with their coffee. Remember the Dalgona craze during COVID? So these brands could soon snap up a chunk of Nescafe's market share. 
Plus, it is increasingly facing more competition from other FMCG companies like Tata that are also innovating coffee brews to appeal to a wider audience. And second, climate change. Climate change is raising temperatures, decreasing the areas in which coffee can be cultivated. This poses a huge threat to the future of the entire coffee industry. So Nescafe needs to invest in research and development to curb this threat. If Nescafe can counter these threats, the future looks extremely bright as more youngsters now prefer coffee to tea. In fact, India's coffee consumption is set to double by 2027. Will Nescafe manage to maintain its legacy among fancy new age T2C brands? And with that, it's a wrap. Thank you for listening to this episode. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Until then, read on.